Well, good morning, everybody. Yes, I like it. Or as I like to say, hey, y'all. Y'all can do better than that. Today is a great day. And it's a great day because today we celebrate promises made and promises delivered in the most tangible form. That's right. This place where you stand, the DC Infrastructure Academy, will train district residents for good paying jobs in the infrastructure industry, where the average wage is, wait for it, $38 an hour, and that's on the low end. We expect more than 2 million workers to retire over the next decade, and our residents will be the first and the best trained in the entire country. The mayor charged us with getting started on filling the training and skills gaps that exist in the infrastructure industry. So we launched a few key programs with the help of Director Donald and his team over at DOES. Uh, we launched Quick Path to Energy with DOES, PEPCO, and UDC, uh, which connected district residents with careers, not jobs, working on maintaining and protecting our electrical infrastructure in the District of Columbia and the region. Since launching Quick Path to Energy, 11 Quick Path graduates are currently employed with PEPCO, and three other graduates are finishing the onboarding process and will start this month. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> the overwhelming majority of these grad graduates that pass their construction and skilled trades exam or CAS exam have been hired by PEPCO, and I want to publicly recognize their partnership in this important program. Please give PEPCO a round of applause. Similarly, last summer, Mayor Bowser announced the launch of Solar Works DC, which trains DC residents to install solar panels, including panels for low-income district residents seeking to reduce their energy bill. I'm happy to announce that the Solar Works DC Spring co Cohort will be held right here at the DC Infrastructure Academy. And I saw some yellow shirts over there. Give those folks a round of applause. Today, you'll find SolarWorks DC graduates all across the district working in the solar energy, including with Sunrun, New Columbia Solar, Leverage, Grid Alternatives, and our very own Department of Energy and Environment. I'm also proud to report that we will launch another program in our Quick Path series, Quick Path to Transportation, DOES and DPW. Mr. Shorter, will train residents interested in receiving a commercial driver's license. This new program will also be housed right here at the DC Infrastructure Academy. Now, let me just take a quick minute to talk about promises made and promises delivered to a particular community. About two years ago, my staff was called to Wellington Park where a young child, a five-year-old, was shot. We went back and we put a mural up in honor of that young child and to remind all of those kids of their beauty, their brilliance, and their ability to soar. We made a commitment to that community that we would make sure to bring job training right there to their community. Well, that is on Pomeroy Road. And where do we stand right now? On Pomeroy Road. This mayor charged us with working incredibly hard to identify workforce training solutions that could reach residents exactly where they are and prepare them not just for jobs, I'm getting misty eyed up here, and prepare them not just for jobs, but careers that would allow them to prosper right here in the District of Columbia. We will invite every single one of those residents who need an opportunity from that community right here into this space. And guess what? They can walk. Now, we couldn't do this important work without the help of some pretty important partners who gave us a little financing as well as a bunch of resources that helped to make this academy come to life. William Von Haney, the, for the president of Exelon, David Velasquez from Pepco Holdings, and Adrian Chapman will join me in that order. Please welcome them as they come up. Good morning. Mayor Bowser and distinguished guests, it's a great pleasure to be here today to participate in the opening of this wonderful facility. Today is a celebration. It's a celebration for the city. It's a celebration for Exelon and Pepco. But most importantly, it's a celebration for the hundreds of people who will come through these doors and gain the skills necessary to create bright futures for themselves and their families. 
We all know how important good jobs are to the well-being of our communities. We also know how important education and technical training are in the quest for so many of those good jobs. That's what this facility is about. But it's also about creating an opportunity for families to flourish and for dreams to be realized. By committing and applying themselves, students attending the Infrastructure Academy will gain the knowledge and the skills to secure their future, and by extension, secure the future of the families they cherish and the communities they call home. I can't imagine any purpose higher than that. For us at Exelon, our industry is changing, technology is changing, customer expectations are changing. To keep pace, we must have the most talented, innovative, and dedicated group of people in the industry to work for us. They are customer focused and de dedicated to imagining and creating the future for energy. We employ more than 1,500 people in the DC metro area. These people are the single most important reason for Exelon's success as a company. They are critical to our mission of delivering reliable, affordable service for our customers. They are critical, critical to our relationship to the people we serve, volunteering at more than 250 not-for-profit organizations, PEPCO and Exelon support in the D.C. area. And we plan to keep it that way. That's why workforce development is a key priority for Exelon and PEPCO. It's also why we encourage diversity in our workforce and why we make it a priority to work with diverse suppliers. The Infrastructure Academy is perfectly suited to serve these missions. It's why we made the commitments for workforce development that we did in the merger agreement, it's why we are here today, and it's why we are so honored to be part of this wonderful demonstration of a truly meaningful and productive partnership between business and government. We truly appreciate all the Academy will do to open its doors of opportunity for our future workforce. Mayor Bowser, thank you for your incredible leadership in this regard. You have been extraordinary in every way, and it has been our honor and pleasure to work with you. And And congratulations to all of you who are part of this. What a great day this is. Thank you so much. I should just mention, um, uh, Pepco and Exelon made a significant commitment to this project at $5 million plus, and I'll tell you about that plus really quickly. Um, we were working to sign these MOUs, and I called Mr. Velasquez, and I said, we need you to give just a little bit more, and he said, we can do you one better. We can give even more than you asked, and he did. So I want you to obviously give him a big round of applause as he comes up to thank him for his strong commitment to this work. Good morning. It's quite an honor to be standing up here to be able to join so many distinguished leaders in the district and the region, to join local workers and also our colleagues as we unveil the uh, D.C. Infrastructure Academy. I especially want to thank uh, Mayor Muriel Bowser because it's because of your vision, your leadership, and your commitment to the residents that we're standing here today, and we have this momentous occasion. So thank you for your leadership. At yeah, PEPCO, our mission for more than 125 years has been pretty simple. We deliver safe, reliable, and affordable electricity to the families and the uh, businesses that we have the privilege of serving. But our mission has always gone beyond and continues to go beyond simply powering homes and businesses. For us, the other part of our mission is to empower the people who live and work here and to do our part to strengthen the local economy and invest in our local communities. We do not succeed, we cannot succeed without a strong and without a skilled workforce. That's why we're so proud to be here as partners with Mayor Bowser. This facility is going to be a training center for more than a near-term job at PEPCO or somewhere else. It will offer participants the technical skills they need to earn a decent income, to thrive in the workplace, and it's going to lay the groundwork for long-term and lasting careers in our communities. For PEPCO and all of Exelon, we're focused on developing and employing local and diverse talent. That focus is made real here today through the Infrastructure Academy. Hiring men and women who live in this area and who hail from all different backgrounds is a core value for our company. It's part of our business model. It's a priority for all of us, from the top executives through every department that works here. As I said when we launched the Infrastructure Academy last fall, 
Pepco as a local company is only as strong as the communities we serve. We want to create pathways for long-term viable opportunities for anyone who calls the district home. The Infrastructure Academy is designed to do exactly that. Of all the things we've done since we completed the merger two years ago with Exelon, this is the one that I am most proud of. It is a concrete, real example of our commitment to the local community and everyone we have the privilege of serving. And so today, we're very proud to join Mayor Bowser and many others here to make this happen. Thank you. Mayor Bowser, distinguished guests. I'm Adrian Chapman, uh, President and Chief Operating Officer of Washington Gas. And Washington Gas is just thrilled to be part of this exciting celebration today as we make the idea of the DC Infrastructure Academy real. As we open the doors to this facility, we'll be opening doors to a brighter future for so many DC residents. The training that will occur here will prepare citizens for good paying careers that will help hundreds of families. Bringing this idea to fruition is special for Washington Gas on many levels. DC is our home. We've been part of this fabric of the city for 170 years, and we take great pride in serving the many residents and businesses, as well as the district government and the federal government. Giving back to our communities and investing in the future are at the center of what we believe at WGL and Washington Gas. That is why we've been pleased to partner with the district and many community groups over the years to do our part to make the district a better place to live, to work, and to play. And we are especially pleased to join Mayor Bowser on this important day to celebrate the opening of the D.C. Infrastructure Academy. We're here today thanks to Mayor Bowser's leadership and determination to make this academy a reality. The district's partnership with private sector partners like WGL and PEPCO will deliver results that the residents of this city will make really good practice with. We have numerous career opportunities at Washington Gas as we add to our complement of maintenance technicians, and we believe this type of an academy will help build a pipeline of well-qualified workforce to meet our needs today and into the future. We're also growing our accelerated pipe replacement program, which means that Washington Gas and our many pipeline contractors will need employees well into the future capable of helping us replace aging infrastructure. WGL is a terrific company to work for that offers good jobs with solid pay and strong benefits. While serving over 162,000 customers here in the district, we're always looking for great employees. And training programs like the one that we're launching today will help us do just that. Finally, we're looking forward to participating in the career fair event this afternoon. This is the second time that Washington Gas has partnered with the Department of Employee Service, Employment Services to help district workers and families from all neighborhoods in the city connect with qualified business leaders and forge a new future. These kind of career fairs open doors and can lead to great jobs and that word you've heard so much today so far, careers for our residents. Mayor Bowser, thank you again for your leadership in making the Infrastructure Academy a reality and for inviting us to be part of this exciting endeavor. You and your staff are great partners to work with, and we look forward to a long and productive partnership. Let's get to work so our residents can get to work. Thank you very much. So um, in this role, I have the pleasure of working with a lot of brilliant people. Uh, the mayor has done an amazing job choosing, after all. She chose me. Um, <laughs> But uh, in this role, I got to meet a gentleman by the name of Rashad Young, who helps to organize our city and keep the trains moving on time. Uh, and I have the pleasure of sitting with him oftentimes without him yelling at me. So it'll be good to invite him up here uh, to give remarks. Please welcome the city administrator, Rashad Young. Uh, thank you, Deputy Mayor, and good afternoon to all of you. Uh, you know, last year, the mayor, uh, Mayor Bowser, charged us to bring together private companies public utilities, labor unions, trade associations, and local education partners to establish this District of Columbia Infrastructure Academy, a single location where our residents can be trained for high demand, well-paying jobs in the field of infrastructure. So we got to work. For, and for over a year, we studied, we looked at best practices, we visit, visited model programs around the country, 
and we worked with our private and public partners to identify the demand for infrastructure jobs and learn that there's a great opportunity to be presented here for our residents to get good paying jobs. And so last September, uh, we signed a memorandum of uh, intent with our partners during the first ever DC Works Week. And that MOI outlined commitments, uh, not only our commitments, but that of our partners uh, to create this academy. And today, I'm so very proud that we answered Mayor Bowser's charge and delivered this beautiful space for our residents to access training and career services, and most importantly, to access opportunity. And so by coordinating our District of, of Columbia agencies and many other stakeholders, we're giving residents to a chance to learn the nuts and bolts of work that will make a tremendous difference in their lives and in our communities. It has been said, but I can't let it uh, go without saying again, thank you to our so many partners, our friends at Pepco, Exelon, and Washington Gas, the University of the District of Columbia, uh, our labor partners with the AFL-CIO, DC Water, WMATA, our own Department of Public Works uh, for coming together to create, make a vision a reality. I want to make a, give a special thanks to our team at the Department of General Services for their work in transforming this amazing space for the Infrastructure Academy. The DGS team is here, led by Director Greer Gillis. Wave your hand, Greer. All the DGS folks, wave your hand, raise your hand. Um, they have worked incredibly hard to create this space, transform this building into something that will be highly productive for our community. Uh, so my, my debt goes out to you, Director. We gave you a short timeline and gave you a yeoman's task, and you all delivered, and thank you. So again, just thank everyone for coming out today and supporting our mission and Mayor Bowser's vision uh, to grow and create job opportunities for district residents. Thank you. So I have had the pleasure of working with this gentleman for two years uh, as we worked incredibly hard to transform what was the worst workforce system into the nation into the absolute best in the nation. Give that a round of applause. Under his leadership, we have gotten our Department of Employment S Services and our entire workforce system off of the Department of Labor's high-risk list. Under his, yes, you should. Under his leadership, we've been able to drive down unemployment more than 1% across the city, some of the hardest-hit wards benefiting the most from those big significant decreases. But we've also begun to do workforce development and training with an eye towards supporting and building the capacity of our own district residents. And this um, work that I've gotten to do with this gentleman is some of the work that I'm the most proud of in my entire career. And I will be sorry to watch him leave us in just a couple of weeks. Um, but I would love to bring up my friend, my colleague, my brother, Director Odie Donald. All righty, good afternoon. So normally we give the honor of introducing our mayor uh, to one of our DC residents and our success stories. And so today will be no different. So uh, I'm Odie Donald II. I'm a Ward 5 resident in the District of Columbia. And I'm also the, uh, the director of the DC Department of Employment Services. And there has not been one time nor will there ever be a time that I start off speaking in front of anybody associated with Washington, D.C. without saying I have the pleasure of working for the best mayor in our country. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I don't just say that. And if you know me and my staff, and we've got to shout out, D is DOES, can y'all raise y'all hands? In here, because I, I heard y'all mention everybody else, but but it's a it's a yeoman's excellent team there, and they were that long before I got there. But they'll tell you I definitely speak plain. If it's uh you know on Saturday or Sunday, I might curse. Uh, but you know there have long before I got here, I think our mayor talked about a public works academy and the need to really have a centralized place for people to receive services. I heard the deputy mayor mention a variety of different areas that we have been failing in or whatnot. And, and 
uh, until very recently. And I think I remember the first conversation that I had with Mayor Bowser. Uh, she told me about all of the challenges that the District of Columbia was facing in workforce development and a variety of, of, I guess, different considerations that I would have to make before taking on the job. But the one thing that stuck out to me is that she didn't mention high risk, she didn't mention at risk, she didn't mention we were ranked number 56 in the country out of 50 states. I still don't know how, how that <laughs> math adds up. But uh, I think the thing that really stuck out to me is that every conversation I've ever had with her, it was about problems that people were facing and coming up with a solution. And uh, I think that, for me, has been an extremely new experience and one that I will treasure for the rest of my life. And uh, I would say what she talked about, you know, then and now has always been based on people ensuring that we treat residents better, that we make sure everyone has a fair shot at this economic growth, that people get the skills necessary to compete for good paying jobs, they have an opportunity to earn a fair wage, provide for their family, and own their own home. And so over the past two years, I've had the opportunity to focus in and, and have a lot of room to help create bringing that vision to life. And so while she only talks about people and how to positively impact people, the cool thing is, is that I don't care who disagrees with it, who sees it, and we're nowhere near done, but the results are really happening. So now we went from, everybody talks about high risk. So we got off high risk for workforce. It kind of tricked me because I didn't even know we were on at risk for UI, so that's gone away as well. Uh, over the past three years, over a billion dollars has been reinvested in employee wages in the community. 50,000 Washingtonians who were not working before have now found work. At the same time, 25,000 people who were discouraged and didn't even want to come into our offices have now come back seeking work. In addition to that, you know, I think we've also seen this customer service bill of rights, and we've been talking about it. I'm sure you saw the pretty sign outside the door. But I think it's a part of everything that we do now is making sure that everybody has a standard in which they can receive services and access services here uh, through the District of Columbia. And so I would say that these results don't happen without strong and dedicated leadership from the highest heights of government, which means our mayor. And so I know one thing I've learned is to never say no, even to the possibility of creating an opportunity for a uh, Washingtonian. And so I've learned that because when the idea of the DC Infrastructure Academy was finalized, I remember she said, well, so we're gonna open this next week? <laughs> And so I'm, I'm thinking, I learned not to say no, so what we did was we, uh, we started with the quick path to energy and then quick path to transportation and then solar works. And so just by that doggoneness of not having to say no to Washingtonians and give everybody an opportunity, I'm not sure if he's here today, but uh, there's a gentleman, Malik Jennings, from Ward 4. And I was walking, I don't see his, Conrad Samuels from Pepco here, I remember walking, I see Conrad in the back, me and Conrad walking and we trying to figure out how we're going to launch this program and there's a gentleman who walks past us and he's like, what program are you talking about? You know, I just lost my job as a cable installer, he was waiting tables and because we had to figure out something that day, we were launching Quick Path that day and this same gentleman is the first person to get his job officially through the Infrastructure Academy. That's a, that's a big deal. And so while, while the pressure has been interesting, it's also been fun and it's been, it's been something that has been successful and that has positively uh, impacted D.C. residents. And so as a D.C. resident myself, I just wanted to make sure that I said thank you and I would love to welcome to the stage what I think is our nation's best leader. Well, good, good afternoon, everybody. 
Welcome to the DC Infrastructure Academy. Uh, and I am very, uh, very proud uh, to welcome you to this new facility that's helping, the building is catching up with the work that is already underway uh, and the work that is planned for the future. I couldn't be more proud of my team who has been very focused on this for the last two and a half years, uh, making sure that we could deliver on the promises that we made. Uh, Odie is quite right. What we are focused on are the people of the District of Columbia, and we're po focused on the real opportunities that exist uh, in our city that are going unfilled right now. Uh, and as I think back on this, I think back on times when I was on the council of the District of Columbia, and people would come in to see me, uh, and I would tell them the big, big things that we had to do with DC infrastructure. I would start off by saying, you know, Metro is about to spend $25 billion. In Pepco, they're doing undergrounding projects where they're spending hundreds of millions of dollars. And we have Washington Gas, who has even more money to spend in our infrastructure. And you keep adding it up, and add, oh, don't, let me not forget DC Water, $4 billion billions of dollars worth of infrastructure work that must happen in our city. So, which means that work is gonna be done. DC residents, through our taxes or through our rates, we're paying for it one way or the other. So our residents and our small businesses must have a fair share in helping to build that work. That's a good idea, right? So that is what we talked about. And so when I had the opportunity to become mayor, you have to change that kind of talk uh, into action. Uh, and our focus had to be, how do we get those DC residents ready for all of that work that is coming our way? A sad statistic that the deputy mayor shared with me was that we, have tw we had 2,500 jobs just like that go on field. And that we have, on average, 48, 58, $60,000 per year that those jobs command. So we have to make sure that our residents are in line for that work. Uh, I want to acknowledge uh, and ask before I continue my remarks, uh, our partners on the council who have been so helpful uh, in making sure not only that we were able to protect the Infrastructure Academy money that I put in the budget, but also that we're able to implement uh, the Infrastructure Academy now. So please join me in welcoming the Ward 8 Council Member Trayon White and at-large Council Member Alyssa Silverman. So, so let me just say about our, our host Council Member, Council Member White, uh, who is just as focused as you would expect on making sure that the residents of Ward 8 get good paying jobs. And the DC Infrastructure Academy is so a part of that. He's also been focused like we are on making sure that everybody work, who works with us lives up to their promises. And we're gonna work with him every step of the way to make sure that happens here and at all the projects across Ward 8 and across the District of Columbia. Council Member White. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Mayor Bowser and, and also uh, Odie Donald, who has been uh, committed to this vision. I come from a space where uh, in the scripture says, where there's no vision, the people perish. And so we're in a place and time where we can't afford just to be talking. We're more, we more so about doing. And uh, in Ward 8 alone, we're faced with a lot of crisis right now. We're in a state of emergency as relates to the crime the unemployment, the underemployment, and I know this is bigger than just Ward 8, this is about D.C. We're happy to have it right here in Ward 8. We're happy to have it right here in Ward 8. And I believe there's been a lot of, lot of conversation about jobs. We need jobs, but we passed the conversation about jobs. We're talking about careers. Well, people can't earn uh, equitable rate wages in D.C. because you know the, DC, uh, the price of living in D.C. is simply going up and up and up. And so this gives everyday residents an opportunity to get skills, to get training, to get what they need so they can change the dynamics of where their children uh, can, can afford to live and where they can change what they eat in every day. They can change the different health disparities in our ward. And so with the vision of this Infrastructure Academy, we are proud to have it here in Ward 8. We can't wait to see it go on the St. Louis East Campus. And let me tell you this, uh, the mayor put it in the budget and the council took it out. 
It was about seventeen million, if you, if I'm corrected. And and the residents of Ward Eight came to the meeting, and made sure that the money got put back in the budget, so we can only have programming in D.C. But have equitable careers right here in Washington D.C. So I want to thank uh, Mayor Bowser, Deputy Mayor Snowden, the leadership of the city, and also our public and private partners. And I see we have uh, Councilman Alyssa Silverman here as well. That's going to fight every day to make sure we're not just talking about equality anymore. We're talking about equitable. Uh, relationships, equitable resources right here and across the district. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Thank you. And let me invite uh, the council chairwoman uh, for workforce, Alyssa Silverman. Thank you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see everyone. I'm Alyssa Silverman. I'm the chair of the Committee on Labor and Workforce Development. And our mission on that committee has been to make sure that we take advantage of every job available in the district and make sure that district residents are trained for every one of those jobs. And we've worked very closely with Director Donald and with Deputy Mayor Snowden and with Mayor Bowser. Um, I think Quick Path is a good example, and I want to thank Exelon and Pepco for working with us because we have a lot of jobs available in our city, but our residents don't get them. And I want to also thank all of our partners at the Workforce Investment Council because what Quick Path does is make sure that our residents can get those jobs, that they're trained for those jobs because we have too many jobs in our city where our residents just don't, just don't get them because they need to take a test. And we need to get smarter about how we train our residents. I'm excited about infrastructure. I'm also excited about hospitality and health care and IT and all our high demand industries in our city that we should be getting jobs for in Ward 8, as well as all over the city. So I'm excited that we really are focused on our high demand industries and I wanna thank all of our partners. I wanna thank Bill and Maggie from Exelon and, from Pe and Dave from Pepco and I see that uh, our fantastic uh, general manager of Metro is here who's had a big achievement this week getting the jurisdictions to agree on dedicated funding. I look forward to working uh, with Dr. Morris Hughes. Sad to see Odie uh, leave us. Uh, but I look forward to working with you all and, of course, with my Ward 8 partner uh, and Mayor Bowser for making sure that every one of those 700,000 jobs that we have in this district, our residents get a fair shot and get them and get living wage careers. Thank you all very much. Well, thanks to the council members. I, I am going to spend just a, a moment um, also acknowledging uh, my team, who has just done an outstanding job um, at get, getting ready uh, and getting us here today. Uh, let me start uh, with one of our very... Um, dynamic leaders in our government, our city administrator, Rashad Young. Please give him a big round of applause. The city administrator was very focused in our negotiations uh, around the merger with Pepco and Exelon, uh, which helped seeded uh, the Infrastructure Academy today. I also want to recognize Deputy Mayor Courtney Snowden, uh, whose team is really focused on making investments in communities where the government and the private sector uh, have not been focused and have not been investing. And our Deputy Mayor for Greater o Economic Opportunity uh, is focused on getting us there. Uh, you've heard Odie Donald say that he got a fantastic opportunity down in Georgia. I don't know why anybody would want to leave Washington, D.C., but, you know, some people are from Georgia and they like Georgia. <laughs> And the thing that happens in us, people poach our people all the time. But, uh, so we want to congratulate uh, Odie on two great years of service to the people of the District of Columbia. <laughs> Let me also introduce, introduce Unique Morris Hughes. Please stand up so everybody can know who you are, Unique, who will become our interim director for DOES. I also want to recognize all of uh, my directors who are here, so please stand up, directors, to be recognized. Tommy Wells from DOE, uh, Director Gillis from DGS, Director Shorter also from DPW, I see Rockman Branch, the Office of African American Affairs. Thank you for being here. 
And I would also like to recognize our energy partners uh, who are uh, our representatives as well from the Public Service Commission. Our commissioners, please stand up. Willie Phillips and Betty Ann Kane, who are here as well as our People's Council, Sandra Matavu Fry. Thank you, Sandra, for being here as well. And uh, I really want to give uh, our appreciation to our private sector partners, our quasi-public and private uh, sector partners who really stepped up to the plate. Because, you know, they have a big problem. They have a lot of work to do. And if they don't have people to fill the jobs to do the work, the work slows down. Uh, and we can't afford for work to slow down when we're talking about uh, our infrastructure. So General Manager Wiedefeld from Metro, stand up, Paul. Let's give Paul a big round of applause. <laughs> now, Paul hires a lot of bus drivers, track workers, engineers, everybody that will help keep our metro moving forward, but also build our metro from the, for the future. So we appreciate you. You heard from David Velasquez, Velasquez and Bill Von Haney from Pepco Exelon, who is also our partner uh, in helping to underground wires throughout the district, and they're always involved with hardening our system and making it more reliable. See, the thing about having 700,000 people and growing, they all have iPads and iPhones. <laughs> and turns out they like to use a lot of electricity. So we have to prepare for a growing city. Uh, to Adrian Chapman at Washington Gas, thank you for your stepped up investment uh, and for all of the work that you do to keep our, our, our safe and reliable system of delivering natural, nat natural gas in the district moving forward. Uh, and Henderson Brown, a lot of people are talking about you at DC Water and all the work that you are doing to build tunnels to help clean our rivers, um, but also to make sure that we have safe and reliable water delivery. Uh, and our partner, our University of the District of Columbia. Let's hear it for UDC. And Dr. Summers is here uh, representing the community college. And the first thing that Doc, President Mason said to me was, you're doing an infrastructure academy, uh, that, that's what we do. We do workforce at UDC, uh, and we want to be a part of it. Uh, so it took a lot of people uh, for us to get here. You've heard from the deputy mayor and the director uh, where we are focused on, on building these jobs uh, and making sure that DC residents are in line for those jobs, and first in line, and ready, and being hired, and being able to build fa their families right here in Washington, DC. So the thing is, uh, people ask me sometimes, what do you mean by pathways to the middle class, Bowser? And I tell them very simply that if we want to continue to build a growing and prosperous middle class in this city, we have to help people get better paying jobs and careers, and we have to build more affordable housing. When we do all of those things, we will continue to grow our middle class. So I hope that you will join us today. Uh, I hope that you will refer people to us uh, so that they are getting the skills and training uh, that they need. And when somebody asks you, and people say this to me a lot, I'm looking for a job. And I say, well, where are you looking? And they say, I'm looking everywhere. And I say, there's no such places everywhere. So where we want you to start is right with us at the Department of Employment Services, your first stop in your fair shot uh, in, in Washington, D.C. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> There is, uh, Deputy Mayor, before we cut the ribbon, I also want to acknowledge all of the community people who are here. I understand that commissioners from ANC 8B are here. Where are you, commissioners? Let's give them a big round of applause. Khadija Watson, I know, is here, and Paul Trantham. Where are the other ANC? Thank you, Commissioner, for being here and for your hard work in the community as well. Thank you.
one right here and then one right here. Okay, we're gonna go for board eight. We're gonna count down from eight. Eight, seven, six, five. 